It's the Line Makers on Sporting News. Hey, welcome back. We have a doozy, as Brian Blessing would say. We're going to the SEC Championship in Atlanta, Georgia, playing in the Georgia Dome, and it's Georgia versus Alabama. Alabama 7, total of 50. I'm Kenny White, here with Rick Heron. You probably knew that already. The names are right there below us. Ricky, take it away. Hey, we finally get a playoff game in college football. This is a national semifinal game. It doesn't get any better than that. The winner plays, o or plays Notre Dame in the national championship game on, I think it's January 7th. Still ways off, but... Uh, are you sure? No, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> uh, it's a, I mean, it's a great matchup. Alabama leads the nation in total defense. You're going up against the Georgia team with, with Aaron Murray at quarterback. He became the first SEC quarterback to ever throw for th over 3,000 yards three years in a row. I mean, SEC not known as a, as a big-time passing league, but uh, seven... And Kenny, I want to ask you, I mean, the Georgia Dome, is it an advantage? Is, is, is it a home field advantage for Georgia or not? I have zero because the ticket allotment is going to be even. Uh, there'll be just as many Alabama fans there uh, as Georgia fans. Well, I could say this. From the numbers that I looked up, Mark Rick, since 2010 at Georgia, is 1-7 against the spread as a dog. And, and a more amazing number, and we just kind of verified it, Alabama has won by 13 points or more in 27 of their last 28 wins. We're not counting when they lost to LSU this year. This year their closest win was by 19, 33 to 14. 27 of the last 28 wins they've won by 13 or more. Now they're a seven point favorite. Now they can lay it on you, there's no doubt about it. And I'm sure they're very excited to be back in the championship picture. This is a very good Georgia team, and Georgia has enough athletes to really stay close in this football game. These two teams have not played since 2008. And I think you're right about quarterback Aaron Murray. He may be the number one quarterback taken in the NFL draft next year. And I'm a big Bama believer, believe me. But I think this game is going to be up and down. I think it's going to be matching scores, and I really think the team that scores last is going to win this football game. So you like the over and you like the dog a little bit. I like the over and I do lean lean to the dog. Okay. I, I, I really wanted to get your opinion. Now, Alabama is dominating as they've been the last couple of years, 26 and 13 against the spread the last three years. This year, Nick Saban and company only six and six against the spread. So. Let me throw you one there. Both teams were six and six against the spread. However, both teams were 0 and 3 versus FCS competition. Both teams took the pedal off the metal and they eased up against the weaker foes. They didn't run the score up. They could have if they wanted to. So both these could have come in nine and three ATS if they really wanted to. Both teams are better than what the paper really shows because they've given up a couple more points than they should and they didn't score as many as they could. Uh, the thing that threw me a little bit is the, is the, the Georgia loss, a really bad loss, 35 to seven at South Carolina. Uh, Alabama lost 29-24 at home to, to Johnny Manziel in Texas A&M. But I, I, I really wanted to get your take on the game because I was unable to decide which side I liked with seven being the number. I think it's a big number. I think the uh, dog's going to be in the game and have a chance to win it. I think Alabama wins, but I think it's going to be in a close one, Ricky. Uh, for Ricky Heron, I'm Kenny White. You've been watching the line makers here on the Sporting News. Stay tuned for more action because we're definitely going to preview the national championship game, which most likely will contain one of these two teams.